प्रभु तव मुरति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समीप रहो हमारी एह नजर समीप रहो हमारी एह घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी आर बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज द पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन आर पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल वी भक्तो जय स्वामी नारायण As we continue our journey with Nilkant Verni, we learn many, many different kinds of virtues and characteristics of Nilkant Verni, and how he displayed his divine personality, and through that divine personality, how many, many were influenced. We come to a story where Nilkant Verni meets this one. sadhu by the name of mohandas and as we read this story we'll understand how nokanvarni and mohandas their relationship and how they relate with one another and how nokanvarni kind of abolishes destroys mohandas's uh you can say misunderstandings title of this story is mohandas meets nokand Swami Narayan Hari As Nilkan was walking at a brisk pace through dense forest a sadhu called Mohandas saw him He was greatly impressed by Verni's personality he experienced bliss while in the presence of the young celibate First and foremost those who are devi those who have a soul which is not demonic can only you can say experience bliss when he meets bhagwan or his ekantik satpurush or his sadhu those who have demonic intellect those whose soul is demonic due to hurting others or whatever it cause may be upon seeing or having the darshan of bhagwan or his satpurush or santo would not feel even an ounce of bliss would not feel even the slightest bit of you can say uh happiness within one within one's heart one would not even get or develop a good quality that this is a good sadhu there is a verse kaise a sant to bo sara re khara kalyana na karna ara re एटलो ज गुण कोई घ्रेसे रे ते तो ब्रह्म मोले वास ले से रे मीनिंग दो इफ वन सीज दैट दिस इज अ गुड और ग्रेट साधु टेक्स इज क्वालिटी टेक्स इज गुड वर्चू देन वन विल रिजाइड इन द अबोर्ड ऑफ अक्षरधाम दैट्स हाउ मच ग्रेटनेस द ग्लोरी ऑफ अ साधु इज बट इन दिस केस इफ वन हैज अ डिमोनिक इंटलेक्ट देन अपॉन सींग maharaj or sadhu one would not be able to comprehend or even think or fathom the greatness or even look upon that sadhu or satpurush's virtue he would only be able to look at himself how great he is and and who he is meaning his ego but in this case mohandas was not that of a type Mohandas he, it says that he experienced bliss while in the presence of the young celibate in the vachanam sarangpur first chapter maharaj has said that moreover if one were to gather together one were to gather together all the pleasures of the vishes of countless millions of brahmans meaning universes even then it would not equal even 1 millionth of a fraction of the bliss which is present in just one pore of god this is how much bliss bhagwan has inside of him if we take our camera our vision 
and we come out of this universe and look upon the universe, then we can see that there isn't only one earth, but there is many, many earths like this in the universe, which may not have been discovered yet by science, but the Sastras do definitely state it. There is, in this earth, there is wealth, women, money, uh, money, fortune, cars, homes, clothing, all the different kinds of worldly pleasures. Yet, the world is living engrossed in all these pleasures. It seems like there is much, much pleasure here. Tasty food, uh, using money, uh, gold, rubies, so, so on and so forth. There is so much. But Sadhguru Gunatitanan Swami in his Vato says that how much bliss is there in Bhagwan's Dham compared to this earth? Well, if there was a mosquito, and if that mosquito were to urinate in Akshardham, if there was a mosquito, and if it were to urinate, that, how much can a mosquito urinate? Not even a drop. That much bliss, even a fraction of it, if it comes all the way down to this earth, that's how much bliss Bhagwan has put in this earth. Yet, imagine how much bliss is in Akshardham compared to that small, small portion which Bhagwan has put in this earth. Nonetheless, Bhagwan states that it's not even one millionth of a fraction of bliss which is present in just one pore of God. Everything is in this world, yet we seem, we feel satisfied. Yet, true, satisf satis true satisfaction is in Bhagwan's form if one can realize via associating with his Ekantik Satpurush. Continuing on, he was convinced Nilkand had extraordinary spiritual powers. He bowed at the feet of Nilkand and asked, Brahmachari, I have lost my way while tracking through the Himalayan foothills, but at this young age, why are you roaming through this difficult terrain? Mohandas asked. Each and every sadhu, aesthetic, renunciate, or a person, whoever, whoever met Nilkan Verney, the very first question was, at such a young age, why are you roaming in the forest? Number one, because it was not seen ever. There was no one that had ever taken the courage there, there was no one that had ever enrolled in such and embarked on such a dangerous epic journey except for Nilkan Verney. Due to that, those whoever he met always asked, what are you doing here in this forest? There is dangerous wild animals like tigers, leopards, cheetahs that can eat you, snakes, so on and so forth. What are you doing here? Each and every time, they would look upon him, two things. One, what are you doing here? And second, his divine persona, his personality, which was amazing to experience even in that time. And think about how fortunate those who were that had the darshan of Bhagwan, even if they did not realize that this was the Supreme Lord himself. Yet, they were very fortunate that they had the darshan of God himself in that form of Nilkan Verni. So Mohandas inquired, Why are you here? What are you doing here roaming in these terrains? I am, want, I am wandering to show the way to the likes of you who are lost, replied Verni. Meaning, Nilkan Verni did not give a straight answer at that time. He said that you are lost, right? I am here to show you the way. But this message that Nilkan Verni was given, giving to Mohandas was not only to show him the physical path that if you go from here to here, you'll reach your destination. Maharaj was talking more on a sublime um, uh, way where he was talking about how this Mohandas has lost his way in the form of reaching Akshardham 
or lost his way in the form of spirituality or lost his way in the form of arrogance and misunderstanding or which is called unhamjan. Due to that, Nilkan Verni was there to give him true understanding. Nilkan Verni was there to again give him a jolt of energy which is needed to start up his spiritual life again. Nilkan Verni was there to guide his boat in the right direction towards the right seashore. All these different stipulations, all these different factors played a role. And that's why in that time, Maharaj had, you can say, put together or kind of fixed this meeting between him and, and, him and Mohandas. Nonetheless, this charitra will show us different various modes where Nilkan Verni gives his understanding which we can also imbibe in our life as of right now. The sadhu was convinced that Verni would show him the true path and decided to stay with him. Now Maharaj had, Nilkan Verni had uh, uh, a very very uh, strict you can say policy that he had set during his era of Nilkan Verni from the age of 11 to 18. His strict, strict policy was that he would always travel alone. He would never travel with anyone or he would never keep anyone with him. This was his policy. But seeing Mohandas's eagerness, seeing Mohandas's mumukshuta, seeing Mohandas to be a very good-willed soul, Nilkan Verni at that momentary time kept Mohandas with him. But in reality, Maharaj's nature was to always travel alone. The young Brahmachari permitted him to stay. He realized that the sadhu was eager to discover his true self, but his mind was attracted to worldly things. Now Maharaj, obviously, as you can say, a role of an MRI machine or a role of an X-ray machine, by observing Mohandas's speech by observing his characteristics character by observing his behavior Maharaj, Maharaj was Maharaj through his omnis omniscient power he can detect everything and anything but just like an MRI machine can scan a human body to the most minute nerves just like how an x-ray machine can detect a broken bone in the same fashion Nilkan Verni, through very short period of time, observed Mohandas and concluded that he was good-willed and he wanted to find himself, his true self, but he had a desire for worldly, worldly things. Maharaj says in the Vachanamrut, Sarangpur 11th chapter, that a devotee of God who has worldly desires does not go to Narak, meaning hell, nor does he have to undergo births and deaths in the cycle of 8.4 million life forms, meaning becoming an animal like a goat, a cow, or becoming a snake or a whale, etc., so on, or a plant, etc., so on and so forth. One would not have to go through this. Instead, he takes innumerable births as a deity and a human being. Then, only when he develops the previously described virtues of vairagya, brahmacharya, etc., does he become worthy of attaining the grace of God? He then becomes an ekantik bhakta of God and attains his gunatit abod, which is akshardham. This is the process of attaining akshardham. If one has worldly desires, one should think in one's mind, do I have desires for money? Do I have desires for wealth? Do I have desires for women? Do I have desires for tasty food? Do I have desires for living in nice homes or possessing nice cars or possessing electronics? All these kinds of desires. Ask within one's heart, do I have these kinds of desires? If so, then Bhagwan states here in his Vachnamrut that one cannot attain Bhagwan's divine abode, Bhagwan's gunatit abode, akshardham. Only then can one attain Bhagwan's akshardham 
if one completely uh, destroys his worldly desires via associating with his ekantik sat purush, attains virtues such as vairagya, brahmacharya, dharma, gnan, and bhakti, and then by the grace of Bhagwan, he becomes an ekantik bhakta, then alone can one attain the abode of akshradham. Now, we may think that we go to mandir, we may think that we even <clears throat> do the darshan of Bhagwan. We may even think that, you know, once in a while we may read the Vachnamrut or Swamini Vato. Due to that, we will attain the abode of Akshradam. We may think that we do the Tilak Chandlo, we wear the Kanti, we do Mada and Bhajan and Bhakti, the nine types of Bhakti. Due to that various factor, we will attain Akshradam. But that's not the case. That was never the case. That was never the case. In reality, our whole purpose in life, we may think that we have these kinds of desires, and yeah, we do, do a little satsang, we come to mandir. But Bhagwan states here that a devotee of God who has worldly desires does not go to Narak. No problem. Well, that person will not go to hell. But for sure, that person will not go to Akshradam either. Only when that person associates with Bhagwan's Ikantik Satpurush, learns the way of Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya, learns the way of how to become a true Hari Bhagat and becomes Ikantik by the grace of Bhagwan, then only can one reach Akshradam. Akshradam is not that easy to attain. Just like how there's many universities in the United States. Some have a low caliber state of where one can get into it right away, like a community college. One, uh, those colleges that have a medium caliber, a medium level, just like um, regular state colleges, like you can say, for example, here, Rutgers University, or so on and so forth. But those who have a very, very high caliber, like Harvard University, Stanford University, MIT, all these Ivy League private schools, which are very, very high caliber and very, very hard to get into. Those who only have those grades, perfect SAT scores, have good extracurricular activities, can get eligibility to go and, and place themselves and uh, you can say enroll and pretty much get admission in that university in the same way. Goluk, Vaikunt, uh, Swarg, all these are very, very low universities to get into. Swarg is like community college. Well, anyone can get into it. Goluk and Vaikunt are like colleges like Rutgers University, University of Illinois, uh, Wisconsin University, all these different universities, medium level. But the abode of Akshradham, Bhagwan's divine abode, that's like Harvard or Oxford or Stanford, or MIT, they're very hard to get into. Only when one gets those credentials, only when one gets that kind of credibility, only when one gets a very high perfect GPA and a perfect score on the SATs, one can get eligibility to get admitted into that university. Bhagwan's Divine Abode is, works in that same fashion. Continuing on, Someone had presented Nilkan with an attractive water pot, which is, had a handle and pretty much uh, a water pot to, con uh, to hold water. Mohandas took a fancy for that, meaning he liked it very much. He found it very attractive, that water pot that Nilkan carried. He thought it was a very, very nice water pot. In that time, water pots were not made from, you can say, steel or you can say uh, copper or anything like that. But they're made from, uh, you can say, um, plants, groud, or we can say dudi. Groud is dudi in Gujarati. And it was completely roasted in the sun. And that shape, and that shape became very hard. And due to that, water was filled in, the, in, that, um, in that groud, that water pot. That was used. Now, Nilkan Verney carried 
such a water pot with him. Mohandas took a fancy for that. Though he did not want it, his mind remained fixed on it even while doing the darshan of Nilkant. Now as we come to Mandir, or as we do the darshan of Bhagwan, there is many, many who do not know the proper way to do the darshan of Bhagwan. Upon doing the darshan of Bhagwan, one looks up, down, side to side, talks with one's friend, or looks around, but does not completely focus one's attention on Bhagwan. Bhagwan does not like this. And in his Vachanamrut, Bhagwan states that when a devotee does the darshan of God, he should do so with an attentive mind and concentrated vision. Instead, when a person disturbs, or a dog disturbs, or some other animal or bird disturbs while he is doing darshan of God, he breaks his vrutti from God's darshan and begins to glance to and fro up and down and also sees them simultaneously. God and the senior sadhu are not, are not at all pleased upon seeing a person with such a wandering vision. Bhagwan does not like one. When one comes to Mandir, he does not look at Bhagwan. He looks at everything. He looks at the Siyasan. He looks at all the other decorations. He looks at everything else but Bhagwan's form. Bhagwan does not like this. And at that time, Mohandas also had a problem. He was attracted towards that water pot. Due to that, he kept looking at the water pot. Even when he had the darshan of Nilkan Verni, when he looked at Nilkan Verni, his mind vrutti, his internal vision was still towards that water pot. Due to that, Maharaj did not like this. And he saw this. Maharaj knew that Mohandas had a desire for his water pot. He definitely knew. But getting back on point, how should we do the darshan of Bhagwan? What is the way to do so? Well, just like Bhagwan gives an example just in this very Vachnamrut, Sarangpur se second chapter, just like how Kushal Kurabai of Dharampur, she was a queen of a very, very large kingdom which had many villages. She ran many villages under her kingdom. She had much money, wealth, everything. Think about it, she was a queen. But upon seeing Maharaj, her way of darshan was that after seeing Maharaj, she would close her eyes and internalize that form inside. And Bhagwan does not mention Muktanan Swami. Bhagwan does not mention, mention Gopanan Swami. Bhagwan does not mention any other sadhu or any other Hari Bhagat like Parvat by Dada Khachar. Bhagwan mentions in this Vachnamrut that those who do darshan of my form should do it like Kushal Kurbai of Dharampur. Think about it, how much of a focus Kushal Kurbai had. And Bhagwan gives an example in his Vachnamrut of her. So this is something that we should also understand that one should focus only on the form of Bhagwan. One should not think or one should not look anywhere else but uh, in Bhagwan. Bhagwan and his Ikantik Satpurush like this very much. While walking, they came to a river. It had stones of all sizes covered with moss. Mohandas warned Verni, be careful while stepping over the stones. If you slip, the pot will break. Now Mohandas was saying, warning Maharaj, that don't fall, be careful, you might slip. Because if you slip, then what will happen? The pot will break. This pot was useless. It was just a utensil for carrying water. There was nothing that was so special about it. But in that time, this pot, if we think about it, was an iPhone X. It was very, very precious. It was very, very valuable. If we look at it in that age, a water pot is nothing. But if we came here and suppose someone had an iPhone, we give it to a baby and a baby was, oh, m uh, messing around with it and it didn't, and the iPhone didn't have a case, 
we would be so cautious that the baby wouldn't throw the iPhone down or it would crack, the screen would crack, something would happen. In the same way, Mohandas was very much cautious and kept warning Nilkan, be careful, be careful the water pot doesn't break, be careful, watch your step there. All these warnings were given by Mohandas because he had a desire for the water pot. He did not care if Nilkan fell or not. He did not care if Nilkan broke his leg or if Nilkan uh, uh, broke his arm or something would have happened to Nilkan. He was not concerned at all about that. He was concerned about the water pot. As we can see, the soul's selfish motive is very much like this. Selfishness, as the, one will look out for oneself, one will look out for something other than the, per, the opposite person. One will look out for a worldly thing such as a phone, a computer, so on and so forth. But one would not look out for if someone was getting harmed. One would not look out for if one had a problem, one can help them out. This is the soul's selfish motive that the soul lives by day in and day out. Now, again, continuing. If you slip, the water pot will break. Nilkan was really surprised at the concern of the sadhu for a mere water pot. On reaching the opposite bank, Nilkan dashed the water pot against a boulder and broke it on purpose. Nilkan saw that there is no way that Mohandas's vrutti would become on my form. There is no way that Mohandas would reach Akshadam without me breaking this water pot, without me breaking his worldly desires, in short. Now, you know, when Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush come on this earth, they play a role. They play two roles. One is the role of a doctor, and the other is the role of a mother. The role of a doctor is so where the doctor, how is he? To the patient, you can say, very mean in the form of giving medicine, bitter medicine, in the form of giving injections, in the form of even operating on that person. But what is the intention of the doctor? To cure that person's illness. On the other hand, the sadhu also plays a role of a mother. How so? Well, her baby that needs taken care of, each and every movement, the mother will monitor. Each and every action, the mother would monitor. The mother would be careful that the baby does not take a knife in his hand. The mother would be so careful that the baby would not fall down the stairs. All these precautions would be taken. Even if the mother would be cooking food, even if the mother would be doing something else, one of her vruttis, one of her visions would be on the baby at all times. This is the compassionate nature of a mother. Alongside, if the child becomes mischievous, if the child becomes very, very bad, if the child shows and displays rude behavior, the mother also has to give a little tap to the child. May it be in the form of physically tapping, or may it be showing a mean face, or may it be saying something that's not proper. But the sole intention of the mother is so that the child behaves and stays safe in the same exact manner. Maharaj and his Ekantik Satpurush, they played these roles where, yes, Nilkan Verni, what he did first when he met, when he, Mohandas encountered him, instead of letting go of him, seeing that he had worldly desires, he saw Mohandas' eagerness to stay with Maharaj. 
So what did he do? He kept him with. He said, even if Maharaj had a nature not to keep anyone with him, what did Maharaj do? He kept him with him. This was his compassionate nature, a nature of a mother. Okay? Now, displaying that as a nature of a mother, throughout their journey, Maharaj stayed as a mother. But, when Mohandas showed his desire for a water pot, showed his desire for an attractive water pot where he had broken his concentration on the form of Nilkand, he had broken his concentration on God and all of his concentration was now focused on that water pot. Maharaj had to become a doctor in the form of giving him bitter medicine, in the form of cutting open his heart so he can perform that open heart surgery. So all of his valves, all of his heart valves would not have any blockages and would become clear. In the same way, Bhagwan had to break that water pot because breaking that water pot would break his desire for that water pot so then again his vision would focus back on Bhagwan. This was only Nilkan Verni's sole intention. Nilkan dashed the pohat against a boulder and broke it. What have you done? You have broken a beautiful pot. Mohandas cried out. As you can display, you can see right away his desire completely. His internal, at that moment, until that moment, Mohandas did not or had not addressed anything regarding that water pot, but just to be careful it doesn't break. But as soon as it broke, he cried out. He said, why did you do it? Showing and displaying his desire that he had some kind of desire except for God in his mind, in his heart. Nilkan replied, Instead of concentrating on God, you have become attached with this mundane thing. Now, in that time, in that form, in previously, Bhagwan was just displaying his concentration on that water pot. But there is also a hidden message here that Bhagwan is showing. This world has only temporary happiness. May it be of a woman, may it be of worldly desires, may it be of any electronic device, or may it be of any person. How so? Well, at that point, Mohandas's pot was that X factor. Mohandas's pot was that X factor that Nilkan had to target and break so that Mohandas's desire would be destroyed. But our X factor here at that point or in this point is these kinds of worldly desires. We think that will give us happiness. How is the happiness of the world? Well, if anyone has seen, you know, there's two coins, two faces, two faces to a coin. On one side, there's a smiley. On the other side, there is a completely opposite face, an angry face. Now, upon flipping, there is a chance of 50-50. 50 percent will land on the smiley. The other 50 percent will land on the angry face. But there is also a chance, a very, very slim chance, in the point one percentile, that the coin might even land on a vertical Meaning a coin can land like this or this. But what if a coin landed on, on, its, on its upright side? What is, the chance of, what is the chances of this occurring? Well, just like how that smiley face is something of the world where, yeah, we can enjoy, their, we can enjoy the good, uh, you can pleasure the world. We feel that it's happiness. On the other side, that angry face, when we get hit hard, after engaging in some kind of happiness, oh, this had no happiness. 
Suppose that we were eating food or we were very hungry, okay? And we just got our favorite food in front of us. Let's say it's pizza. We eat and eat and eat until our stomach, become, uh, our stomach becomes completely full. Then, if we were given even the most, you can say, nicest item in the form of uh, a ladu, or in the form of, you can say, another uh, item such as a sandwich, or any Indian food, anything, then we would be like, no, I don't want it anymore. Why? House full. Well, at that time, your house wasn't full. At that time, you thought that this was the best thing that happened. In that time, your mind, your vrutti was completely concentrated on eating that pizza. But upon fulfilling your desire within 20 minutes, any other attractive item, even a whole ankut, if it was presented in front of you, you would not have a desire to eat it. Why? You don't have a desire at all? To eat those other other attractive foods? No. At that time, your house is full. You are satisfied. In the same way, in this world, when one develops a desire and one fulfills it, at that momentary time, one feels satisfied. And then again, one gets hit over the head. Where one feels, oh, this is it. That's it. That happiness is gone. There's nothing else now. But, one again seeks another form of happiness. Okay, then at that time, a short period of time, that person engages again in that happiness. And then again, oh, that's it? This is the happiness? But there is also a chance of landing our coin upright instead of even the smiley face or the happy side. There is a chance we can land our coin in the upside. Where? We do not ever get engaged in the bad of the world or we do not get engaged in the good of the world. And that is the association of Maharaj in his Ikantik Satpurush. If we take this upside, then we would not get hit by either of these uh, worldly desires. Worldly desires show a face of good, but in the end, it's bad. And in this point, Mohandas realized his mistake. When Maharaj broke that pot, Maharaj said, instead of you concentrating on God, you have become attached to these mundane things. Then how will you get redeemed from this world? Meaning, how will you attain moksha? What will happen to you? Maharaj made him think. A reformed Mohandas tert touched Verni's feet. But this is the importance of Samagam. We say, that, you know, what is the point of associating with santos? Santos in the form of a satpurush, what is the point? Well, so that he helps you get your, you can say, moksha, not only that, but we are stuck in this world. Suppose we had a car and it got stuck in the mud. It got stuck in mud so much so that the wheels kept turning, yet you could not do anything else. You could not move forward. How can you get out? You would need a person or a couple of people to push your car out of the mud so that, again, you can go forward. In the same way, the Ekantik Satpurush helps you get out of the mud in the form of this maya, in the form of this illusion, in the form of these worldly desires. Only then can one realize that Bhagwan's bliss is true and the bliss of this world is false. But... Sant Samagam, that's something that we can take, definitely take a look at in the life of Puja Guruji. I want to tell you a story about how important the factor of Sant Samagam is, how important it is to, to associate with Bhagwan's Ekantik Satpurush. What does this Satpurush do for you, truly? What is his, you can say, what, what is his value? Why is he so valued? Why is his name Satpurush, Sadguru, uh, uh, Mota Sadhu, Sadhu? Why is it mentioned in the Vachnarud via Bhagwan Swaminarayan's mouth? Why has Bhagwan Swaminarayan stated and put so much emphasis on his Ekantik Satpurush and his Sadhu's Samagam? What is the reason for this? Well, there's a story in Puja Guruji's life. 
that displays this very factor that I would like to share with all of you today. Harris Patel, or also known as Hasmuk Bhagat, of Chicago, yeah, I want to say his name, everyone also knows him, but there is another side of him that no one knew beforehand, that only Guruji and a very few people knew. But where was he before? How was he before? And how is he now? That's something to ta take a look in so we can see how much of a factor Sant Samagam plays. Hasmuk Bhagat of Chicago lived in a completely, at that time, lived in a completely American life. He had a business that he owned, a PC board factory, worth $6.5 million. I bet you didn't know that. But he had bad habits of alcohol and cigarettes. He mostly remained fully intoxicated with alcohol 24-7. Not only that, he also finished three boxes of cigarettes in a day. This was his nature. This was what he wanted to do. This is what he liked to do. He had much more other bad habits, but one time, his business partners tricked him into wrongdoings, which resulted in the factory closing down, bankruptcy. Not now... All of his property worth $6.5 million were not in his possession. Then he became more intoxicated due to his stress, of course. He was so drunk that he could, he could barely walk or st stand on his feet. At that time, Guruji was in Chicago along with some santos. Guruji was, Guruji was informed by devotees about Hash Patel's factory loss and his bad habits of drinking alcohol. On the other hand, some devotees also went to Hash Patel's house to inform him of Guruji's presence in Chicago. Guruji himself told devotees to arrange Padramni, a house visit, to Hash, home, Hash Patel's home. First, devotees did not agree with Guruji because of Hash Patel's alcoholic habit and immaturity. But Guruji said, Hasmukbai is in trouble. We have to go to his home to help him. Look at Guruji's vision. So that he can attain inner peace. Now when Guruji first entered Hash Patel's home, Hasmukbai spoke, You are the first sadhu who has dared to enter my home. Then he met Guruji and listened to Guruji's divine words, elevating from, uh, elevating from his heart. Meaning Kathavarta. Guruji performed Kathavarta and the Vachnamrut Swami Nivato. Then he met Guruji. Those words of wisdom touched Hash Patel's heart and hit, and his direction of life changed forever. Just as with the first meeting with Gopan Swami, Abhaisi's mind and heart changed forever. Hash Patel met with Guruji only once, which resulted in a change of direction. After the first meeting with Guruji, Hash Patel had given up all of his bad habits and accepted Guruji's wisdom and became a staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. He wore a kanti from the hands of Guruji and took Vratman. After a year, whenever Guruji or Santos came from India to USA, Hash Patel would take a small vacation from his job and traveled one place to another with Santos. And even today, he reserves holidays and he comes on vacation here at the Mandir and stays here for a month and does the association of santos. I can even tell you that he has a, a, a very, a very uh, you can say, a, a habit of reading the Vachanamrut. Constantly when you see him, he has a Vachanamrut in his hands. Think about him before, 10, 12 years ago, 15 years ago, when he had the habit of drinking alcohol all day and smoking three packs of cigarettes, three boxes. And now, due to the very factor of association of Puja Guruji, he is now reading the Vachnamrut constantly. He has bhakti in his life. He has dharma in his life. He has gnan in his life. He has vairagya in his life. What is the cause of this? We must see. We cannot just see right now, oh, Hasmuk Bhagat is a great Bhagat and admire it. Yeah, sure, that's good. But what is the reason? What is the cause of him transforming in this fashion? 
Why is he why is he like this? Before he was like that, now he's like this. What is the reason? We can only give credit to our Ekantik Sadpurush, our Puja Guruji, for changing his life. And that's why in this case, the Samagam of Maharaj and his Ekantik Sadpurush is very important. Maharaj made Mohandas realize that you are in trouble. This desire is not going to give you moksha. It's going to give you narak. Due to that, he broke that water pot for his heat, for his benefit, for his goodwill. Maharaj did this. A few days later, they came across a tall tree from which violet mango-like fruits had fallen on the ground. Milken started eating one. Mohandas too took one to eat. No, don't eat the fruit. They are poisonous. Verney warned him, if you eat them, then you will die. Mohandas threw them away. This is Bhagwan's greatness. Poison, yet he is able to digest, yet he is able to eat. Yet, on the other hand, he warned Mohandas that you're just a human. If you eat it, you'll die. But Mohandas threw them away. Four bhavas came along, meaning four other sadhus, fake sadhus. On seeing Nokant eating the fruits, the bhavas plucked them as well. Verni told Mohandas to tell them not to eat the fruits. Mohandas told them they were poisonous, they will die if they ate them. But they, rec they remarked, why is the brahmachari eating them? What is the reason for that? This was Bhagwan's Leela, obviously. Because he too is a great person, Mohandas replied. We too are great, boosted the Bhavas. And so out of arrogance, they ate the fruits and died immediately. See what arrogance, see what ego, see what egotism can do to a person. Bhagwan Swaminarayan states in the Vajramrit, Loya 14th, what is egotism, egotism light, like? Meaning, what is ego like? Well, a person with egotism remains arrogant even before those who are superior to him. But he cannot become humble and serve them. This is the form of egotism. Bhagwan Swaminarayan warned Verni, Nokan Verni warned those bhavas, may it be indirect via Mohandas, to not eat them, they're poisonous, yet... Due to the arrogance, all of those four bhavas ate those ate that fruit and died immediately. What we can learn from this is not to display or even possess any kind of egotism in our heart for or against Maharaj, his sadhu, or his Hari Bhagat. Maharaj only shows one one way or one uh, in one circumstance where one can one should display ego. Which is, when some, someone talks bad about Maharaj or his sadhus, then one can become, uh, one can, you can say, become uh, egotistical there and tell them off. But there is no other circumstance, circumstance where Maharaj shows that you should keep ego here, you should keep ego with sadhu or, Ma, or Maharaj or Satpurush. There is no other factor for that. So, several years later, while Mohandas was on the pilgrimage to Dwarka, he met Bhagwan Swaminarayan in Saurashtra, meaning Gujarat, India. He took the saffron diksha from Sriji Maharaj and was named Vrajnanan Swami. This was the greatness of Nilkan Verni, Bhagwan Swaminarayan, that he came on this earth to break those false understandings. He came on this earth to help those realize the true way to true, the true way back to God. He came on this earth to establish Dharma, Bhakti, Gnana, Vairagya. And due to that very factor, as of right now, after 236 years later, we too are sitting here in the United States worshipping Bhagwan Swaminarayan. We too are able to worship Bhagwan Swaminarayan even if we go abroad in other countries. This is all due to Bhagwan Swaminarayan because he came on this earth, he displayed his greatness, he left his essence here. 
so that everyone else can take that scent. And from that very factor, from that very reason, for that very reason, we are happy today. So we can thank Maharaj. Nonetheless, today is the birthday of Sadguru Shri Muktanand Swami and Bhaktaraj Shri Dada Kachar. Sadguru Muktanand Swami, also known as the mother of Satsang, our Adi Guru in our Guru Parampara, our, our spiritual Guru lineage, he is our first Guru. Guruji is the seventh successor of Sadguru Shri Muktanand Swami as of right now. And in the whole Sampraday, in the whole Sampraday, only Guruji is the one who possesses the lineage of Sadguru Muktanand Swami. There is no one else. There is many lineages of Sadguru Gunatitanand Swami, Gopanand Swami, Brahmanand Swami. But Guruji is the only sadhu in the whole Sampraday who has the lineage of Muktanand Swami. Meaning he is a descendant of Muktanand Swami. So we are very fortunate to be in Sadguru Muktanand Swami's mandar as of right now. He has given and contributed many things to the Sampraday. He has given us this arati that we sing every day. He has given us many, many things. But the most precious thing that He has given us is the gift of Puja Guruji. Puja Guruji displays such kind of virtues that Muktan Swami also possessed or possessed in His life as of right now. Some which are His compassionate nature, so forth that He is called the mother of satsang. So, nonetheless, we can only do countless, countless vandan to Sadhguru Muktan Swami for coming on this earth for our benefit. Thank you, Muktan Swami, and happy birthday. Nonetheless, Bhaktadad Shri Dada Kachar, who was at such a young age a great idol in the eyes of many, many, who displayed great Samarpan Bhav or surrendership, who had unflinching faith in the form of Bhagwan Swami Narayan in and his Satpurusho, who had an associ who had association with Sadguru Muktanan Swami. Due to that, Bhagwan Swami Narayan in the Vachnamrut, every page, Dada Kachar, Dada Kachar, Dada Kachar. Due to that very factor. Maharaj stayed not in kingdoms. Maharaj stayed not in palaces, but stayed in the courtyard of Dada Kachar due to his faith and his samarpan bhav or his surrendership. We also can take from Dada Kachar's life even to the small minute point, but we thank Dada Kachar for coming on this earth for our benefit. And thank you, Dada Kachar, and happy birthday. So this will be our lecture for today. Next week, we will continue on Nilkanvarni's epic journey. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.